I am coming close to the end of my first read of Nietzsche's book, The Birth of Tragedy. In chapter 15, Nietzsche partly writes about how Socrates and his dialectical method of logic and rational thought, guided by causality are nothing but illusions, for not only attempting to understand the depths of being, but also for knowing and correcting being itself. This is not only the profound illusions of Socrates, but he claims that, I quote, this sublime metaphysical illusion is an instinctful accompaniment to science. When I first read over this, it got me thinking about Elon Musk's Neuralink project. If you don't know what this is, Neuralink is an American brain computer interface company. The plan is to merge man with computer by implanting what Musk calls the neural lace, which will be a digital biomechanical layer above the cortex of the brain. That would not necessarily imply extensive surgical insertion, but ideally an implant through a vein or artery. Musk explained that the long-term goal of this project is to achieve symbiosis with artificial intelligence, or AI, by essentially having a computer attached to your brain. Nietzsche says that the belief in rational thought guided by causality can be capable of correcting being itself is what he calls the sublime metaphysical illusion of science. So what would he think of the neural link? Is it an attempt to correct being by using the methods of science, but without really knowing what we are? The rational method can only help so much in understanding beings that reside in irrationality. Humans are not rational at all, but they mould themselves around believed rational modes of being for the sake of civilization and the broader collective social network. It is nothing more than a facade. The greatest lesson from psychological disciplines like psychoanalysis, for example, is not only do people not know what they want in life, which is more of a existential phenomena, but they also don't do or get what they desire, which demonstrates the complexity of the psyche of a day-to-day -day human existence. Would the neural link becoming one with machine lead to the future development towards the overman? No, because with Nietzsche, the fundamental principle to the idea of the overman is that the overman can create his own values. But then you might say, the connection made between man and machine would arise new values. Yes, but these values would be a priori to the neural link itself. The fundamental maxim of the overman, or ubermensch, is that it does not formulate its own values from exterior motives or outside influences. In relation to Musk himself, I think he would admire a number of such characters, as they use science more as a creative tool in order to shape the world according to their will which brings into being new value because science for them is not a form of dogmatism but a means of causing paradigm shifts and advancing human evolution, etc. But when it comes to admiring certain inventions, that's a whole different matter. Obviously, I wouldn't know what he would think, but if I had to make a calculated guess, it would be very precarious about Neuralink, but more optimistic towards space exploration, for example. Because Neuralink isn't about exploration as such, at least in the sense that it is not about confronting the unknown, but more about confining you into a dogmatism of science, which in the extended long period of time could devour all that made humans human. The slow negation of the right hemisphere and prioritization of the left, for example. Something that has been occurring slowly over years and years since the Enlightenment period. This is wonderfully demonstrated by Ilian McGilchrist in his book The Master and His Emissary. So in theory, the Overman could very well be the long-term outcome of the Neuralink, in which the beginning of every so-called human is not born but made into something it really never was, whereby the Neuralink is not an exterior influence placed upon you to cause new values, but an interior influence whereby its manifestation causes your outcome of something completely new in value and essence. You can take on a sensationalist narrative with this, but when looking into the far future with this type of technology, it's not illogical to do so. It is the catalyst for post-humanism. Science rushes headlong without selectivity, without taste, and whatever is knowable in the blind desire to know all at any cost. Nietzsche also said, Spurred on by its powerful illusion, science is rushing irresistibly to its limits, where the optimism essential to logic collapses. For the periphery of science has an infinite number of points, and while it is as yet impossible to tell how the circle could ever be fully measured, the noble, gifted man, ever before the mid-course of his life, inevitably reaches that peripheral boundary, where he finds himself staring into the ineffable, if he sees here, to his dismay, how logic twists around itself and finally bites itself in the tail. 
Nietzsche sees here that the illusion that science presents upon itself in the belief that rational thought and logic can lead to understanding the depths of being will inevitably cause what he calls tragic knowledge. After all the attempts to understand one's essence through the lens of science and logic, in Nietzsche's eyes will prove insufficient in understanding ourselves and that tragic knowledge will need art of many forms as both protection and remedy if we are to bear it. It's interesting to see this through the lens of posthumanism. If we are to end up through the uses of scientific discipline, to be in a position we never wanted or intended to be in, where logic twists upon itself and upon its own creators. Elon Musk himself sees the advancement of AI or artificial intelligence, which is that of our own scientific making, as being an existential threat to humanity. This rings very similar to how Nietzsche writes about nobleman staring into the ineffable and how logic twists upon itself and bites its own tail. Strangely similar to how the complexities of AI development to such an extreme that it puts humanity's existence at threat. But is to merge with the fast growth of artificial intelligence the answer? I think so because what is the alternative? Even when such a contribution isn't exactly moral or ethical in nature, it's in part our own fault. The speed in which AI has developed should have been controlled, especially when we are in an era within Western culture where what the norm is today will be completely different in 10 or 5 years time simply because of technological development and therefore very little space for us to normalise to such changes. It's no surprise that mental health in all of its spectrum has been at an all-time high in the past 20 years. With there being many causes, the majority is mainly due to technological development in society and all of its various phenomena. The transition from religion to scientific contemplation is a violent, dangerous leap, which is not to be recommended. In order to make this transition, art is far rather to be employed to relieve the mind overburdened with emotions. Out of the illogical comes much good. It is so firmly rooted in the passions, in language, in art, in religion, and generally in everything which gives value to life. It is only the naive people who can believe that the nature of man can be changed into a purely logical one. We have yet to learn that others can suffer and this can never be completely learned. The last man is a term used by the philosopher in Thus Spoke Zarathustra to describe the antithesis of the imagined superior being, the Ubermensch, whose imminent appearance is heralded by Zarathustra. The last man is tired of life, takes no risks, and seeks only comfort and security. He is the goal that Western civilization has apparently set itself, according to Nietzsche, which I would definitely, in most cases, agree with. The people of Western culture are steeped in pleasure and decadence. After unsuccessfully attempting to get the people to accept the Ubermensch as the goal of society, Zarathustra confronts them with a goal so disgusting that he assumes that it will revolt them. The lives of the last man are pacifist and comfortable. There is no longer a distinction between ruler and ruled, strong over weak or supreme over the mediocre. Social conflicts and challenges are minimised. Every individual lives equally and in superficial harmony. There are no original or flourishing social trends and ideas. Individuality and creativity are completely suppressed. This is what I think brings about the paradoxical phenomena of Neuralink. That it can be both in the long term an extension towards the overman, but also towards the last man for many people in society. That it will have the ability to simply take away effort or will in itself, which is the essence of being in many of the facets of our living. One key example of this is language. With the neural link, it has been said people would not need to talk. People would simply just send thoughts to each other. Elon Musk said the following, You wouldn't need to talk. We could do it for sentimental reasons. Therefore, rendering human language obsolete. This in itself is a crucial problem for many philosophical quandaries because the question arises, how can thought be articulated well outside of language, as we think in language, without even using it? And you would also have people like Lacan, the famous psychoanalysis of the 20th century, who proposed that everything is fundamental to language, and that it's the fundamental basis for the unconscious. With this and the last man in perspective, I think Nietzsche would likely criticise the inevitability that people will misuse the neural link to escape reality. 
weakening themselves and their spiritual and psychological constitutions in the process. To end this video, I will quote a piece of text written by Nietzsche on a post-humanism outlook of existence, purpose, and the conception of a never-ending reality. What alone can be our doctrine? That no one gives man his qualities, neither God, nor society, nor his parents and ancestors, nor he himself. The nonsense of the last idea was taught as intelligible freedom by Kant, perhaps by Plato already. No one is responsible for man's being there at all, for his being such and such, or for his being in these circumstances or in this environment. The fatality of his essence is not to be disentangled from the fatality of all that has been and will be. Man is not the effect of some special purpose or a will, an end, nor is he the object of an attempt to attain an ideal of humanity or an ideal of happiness or an ideal of morality. It is absurd to wish to devolve one's essence on some end or other. We have invented the concept of end. In reality, there is no end. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I was a bit all over the place, but it was enjoyable to ponder about such things to say the least. If you want to get involved in a discussion, comment your thoughts down below, like the video and subscribe. If you want to support the channel, links to Patreon will be in the description and comment section below. Thanks for watching.